So let's say you collect data in multiple waves. For example, uh, you have your data collection open for a month and only 150 people respond, but you really needed 300 people to respond. So you make another push, you email a bunch of other people and get another wave of respondents, another 150 or so. Um, or let's say you are sampling two different groups, uh, maybe two different organizations, um, and you get 150 from one, 150 from another or two different types of people, firefighters and policemen, or something like that. Police workers? I can't remember. Anyway, if you have multiple groups of data, um, you might have what's called sampling bias. And this can take many different forms, again, from multiple groups to multiple waves, different times, do people who respond early respond differently or for different reasons than those who respond late. Whatever the case may be, there's a way to determine if these multiple data sets, because they really are subsets of your data, um, and there's a way to determine if these multiple data sets are compatible, are congruent, if they are actually um, understanding your survey, if that's what you sent out, a survey, uh, roughly equal. So the test we would do for that is called a homogeneity of variance test, also called the Levine's test. In order to do that, you have to have a variable that represents each group or each wave in your data set. So I have a variable here called wave. It, it um, indicates those who responded early versus those who responded late. If I go over to my variable view, you can see here wave um, numeric early versus late where um, zero equals early, one equals late responders. Um, I should change this to nominal. There we go. And I can test to see if my variables are different, if, if the distribution of my variables differs based on uh, those waves. So let me go to Analyze, and I'm going to go to Compare Means and One Way ANOVA, and I want to see really if every variable, pretty much, you know, variables that vary, so not categorical, but uh, every other variable. Let's see, not marital status. Let me, oops, hit Control instead of, ah. Control A there and get rid of marital. People is a normal variable. Let's see, not nominal, normal. It's a, it's it's a number. Uh, years in job, customer interactions, years in firm, education, income, job category only has two values, so I do want to include that. I don't want to include wave because that's the variable I'm using to discriminate between the groups, and I don't want to include ID, of course. But everything else I'm going to include. Too many variables. Ha! All right, well, let me just do a few of them then, just to demonstrate. So let me get these ones down here. The, um, the what do you call these? Demographic variables. Let me grab a few others here, um, all the way up to AP. There we go. And the factoring variable in this is going to be wave. It's the variable that, that indicates which wave or which group um, each respondent was in. So I throw that into factor. When I go to post hoc, nope, wrong one, sorry. I think it's options. Pull that up here. There we go. Options. I want a homogeneity of variance test. And hit continue. And hit OK. And what we end up with, let me pull this up here. Resize to fit this window. Here we go. So what we have is a homogeneity of variance test. We want it to be not significant. Over here in the SIG column, um, here's the Levine statistic. I mentioned Levine. But uh, if it's not significant, that means they're not different. And we want them to be not different. So we look down this list, and definitely not different. Um, ooh, customer interactions are different. And it makes you wonder. So mine are split up in early and late. And you got to wonder, those who were early, did they have fewer customer interactions so essentially less busy employees, and so they answered early, whereas those who had more customer interactions, those who were busy, answered late. That could be the case. Income, uh, this could be related to customer interactions. The more customers you deal with, the better your uh, commission, typically. Job category, so I wonder if there is a um, relationship between, uh, so we have two job categories here. We have, uh, see, front end, Front, no, front end's the wrong word. Uh, we have people who deal with customers and people who deal with bills, bill collection. Um, so those people may have responded differently for different reasons. Apathy. <laughs> those who <laughs> apathy. Those who really don't care didn't respond early, and those who do care responded early. 
Anyway, there are a few here. Um, participation, that's another one that makes sense, right? Those who don't feel like they participate much, maybe you didn't respond right away. Um, anyway, so these are the ones where we'd say, well, they, the two different groups didn't respond similarly on these variables. They have different distributions. Um, and so what is the rule of thumb? What is the cutoff? How many variables can we differ by and still move forward? I don't know if that's published, actually. Um, in this case, I'd say, well, we're probably pretty good, but if we're going to consider things like um, participation, that's that PP there, we need to be very careful and um, we might be, it might be ill-advised actually to do anything based on participation because that is so different across all its variables. Same with customer interaction. I and mean, look at the size of that statistic. Um, if we're going to do any sort of analysis based on customer interaction, it's going to be tricky unless we're using customer interaction as, for example, a moderating variable. Well, in that case, yeah, there is a difference and it's an interesting difference. So there you have it. Um, that's how you do a sample bias uh, Levine's homogeneity of variance test.